And now chapter 51, Perverted Expression of Mellows. Rasa Basa or incompatible mixtures of mellows may be classified as Uparasa, false expression, Anurasa or imitation, and Aparasa or perverted or misrepresented mellows. There is the following statement by an impersonalist who had just seen Krishna. Quote, when a person has passed completely from all contamination of material existence, he relishes a transcendental bliss of being established in trance. But as soon as I saw you, the original personality of Godhead, I experienced the same bliss. Unquote. This perverted reflection of Mellows is called Shanta Uparasa, or a perverted reflection of mixed impersonalism and personalism. There is another statement as follows, quote, Wherever I am glancing, I simply see your personality. Therefore, I know that you are the uncontaminated Brahman effulgence, the supreme cause of all causes. I think that there is nothing but you in this cosmic manifestation." Unquote. This is another example of uparasa, or a perverted reflection of impersonalism and personalism. When Madhu Mangala, an intimate friend of Krishna, was dancing before Krishna in a joking manner, no one was paying attention to him, and he jokingly said, quote, My dear Lord, please be merciful upon me. I am praying for your mercy." Unquote. This is an example of uparasa in fraternal affection and neutrality. Kamsa once addressed his sister Devaki as follows, quote, My dear sister, having seen your dear son Krishna, I think that he is so strong that he can kill even wrestlers as strong as the mountains. So I will have no more anxieties about him even if he is engaged in a terrible fight." Unquote. This is an instance of uparasa in a perverted reflection of parental love. In the Lalita Madhava, Srila Rupa Goswami says, Quote, the wives of the Yajnika Brahmanas were all young girls, and they were attracted to Krishna in the same way as the gopis of Vrindavan. Out of their attraction, they distributed food to Krishna. Unquote. Here, the two devotional mellows are conjugal love and parental love, and the result is called uparasa in conjugal love. One of the friends of Srimati Radharani told her, quote, my dear friend Gandharvika, or Radharani, you were the most chaste girl in our village, but now you have divided yourself and are partially chaste and partially unchaste. It is all due to Cupid's influence upon you after you saw Krishna and heard the sound of his flute." Unquote. This is another example of uparasa caused by divided interests in conjugal love. According to some expert learned scholars, the feelings between lover and beloved create perverted reflections of mellows in many ways. Quote, the gopis have become purified by Krishna's glance, and as such, Cupid's influence is distinctly visible on their bodies. Unquote. Although in the material sense, the glancing of a boy at a girl is a kind of pollution, when Krishna threw his transcendental glance at the gopis, they became purified. In other words, because Krishna is the absolute truth, 
any action by him is transcendentally pure. After Krishna chastised the Kaliya Naga in the Yamuna River by dancing on his heads, the Kaliya Naga's wives addressed Krishna, quote, Dear cowherd boy, we are all only young wives of the Kaliya Naga, so why do you agitate our minds by sounding your flute? Unquote. Kaliya's wives were flattering Krishna so that he would spare their husband. Therefore, this is an example of uparasa or false expression. One devotee said, quote, My dear Govinda, here is a nice flowery bush in Kailas. I am a young girl, and you are a young poetic boy. After this, what more can I say? You just consider, unquote. This is an example of uparasa caused by impudence in conjugal love. When Narad Muni was passing through Vrindavan, he came to the Bandiravan forest and saw in one of the trees the famous parrot couple that always accompanies Lord Krishna. The couple was imitating some discussion they had heard upon the Vedanta philosophy and thus were seemingly arguing upon various philosophical points. Upon seeing this, Narad Muni was struck with wonder and he began to stare without moving his eyelids. This is an example of anurasa or imitation. When Krishna was fleeing from the battlefield from a distant place, Jarasandha was watching him with restless eyes and was feeling very proud. Being thus puffed up with his conquest, he was repeatedly laughing. This is an example of aparasa. Everything in connection with Krishna is called ecstatic devotional love although it may be exhibited in different ways, sometimes in right order and sometimes as a perverted reflection. According to the opinion of all expert devotees, anything that will arouse ecstatic love for Krishna is to be taken as an impetus for transcendental mellow. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta summary study of Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu by Srila Rupa Goswami. And now some concluding words by Srila Prabhupada. Srila Rupa Goswami concludes by saying that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu is very difficult for ordinary men to understand. Yet he hopes that Lord Krishna, the eternal Supreme Personality of Godhead, will be pleased with his presentation of this book. By rough calculation, it is estimated that Srila Rupa Goswami finished Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in Gokul Vrindavan in the year 1552. While physically present, Srila Rupa Goswami was living in different parts of Vrindavan and his headquarters were in the temple of Radha Damodar in the present city of Vrindavan. The place of Rupa Goswami's bhajan, execution of devotional service, is commemorated still. There are two different tomb-like structures in the Radha Damodar temple. One structure is called his place of bhajan, and in the other, his body is entombed. Behind this very tomb, I have my place of bhajan, but since 1965, I have been away. The place, however, is being taken care of by my disciples. By Krishna's will, I am now residing at the Los Angeles Temple of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. This purport is finished today, the 30th of June, 1969. <laughs> Sri 
This ends the narration of the Nectar of Devotion, the complete science of Bhakti Yoga. Written in Sanskrit by Srila Rupa Goswami in the 16th century, it was translated into English by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. In this context, the word Acharya means a person who is perfected in God consciousness and who also teaches others, by both precept and example, how to perfect themselves. The song heard at the beginning and the end of each chapter was sung by Śrīla Prabhupāda. The musical selections, mixing and engineering were under the direction of Neil Schlachter, and the director and narrator of this production was Amala Bhakta Das. This has been a Krishna Productions presentation. The text of the book was copyrighted by the Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust in 1982. The performance and recording were copyrighted by Amala Bhakta Das in 1991, and all rights are reserved by both parties. We hope you have enjoyed listening to this narration. If you would like to listen to other such transcendental recordings, please write or phone for our catalog. Thank you for allowing us to share with you the glorious, enlightening words of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who descended from the spiritual world to the earth to teach all humanity how to taste and relish the nectar of devotion and thereby realize God through loving service to Him. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. बंद रूप सनातन रघुज गोपाल को कृष्णा कीर्तन कानन तन पर प्रेमाम्रताम बनी धी